Hey everybody, Cody here. We're going to go ahead and do a walkthrough of Topaz Clarity. This is version 1.0. Uh, it's a relatively new software that just came out from Topaz and uh, it's it's pretty cool so far. So let me do just a general walkthrough of a few menus. Uh, we'll go over an image that I created the other day and we'll apply some of the effects in to the program and that way you'll be able to see everything that it can do and kind of get an idea of what's going on. And uh, after this tutorial, if you want to visit topazlabs.com slash clarity, uh, you can download a free trial from there. And if you like it, before May 31st, you can buy it for $29.99. That's $20 off the price. So that's a, that's a pretty good deal. Um, so this is an image I shot the other day. And actually from Photoshop, you can take it and go to the filter menu and scroll down until you see Topaz Labs and then click on Clarity and it will bring you into its own program. Um, I do like that portion. I like to edit in the, in the plugin program. So this is the beginning screen where you start. You can see we've got the full screen image that I, uh, that I loaded. Uh, on the top left we have collections. So what these are are different presets that you can go through and click on and it will show you and the first time you click on it when you open the program it does have to build a preview which is kind of nice for the flow later so I'll show you what that means here in just a second once it's done. I have a generally fast computer but um, it does take a little bit of time to load those. Um, not so much a knock on the software, it's, uh, I, I get why it's doing it. So as you go through here you get these live previews and this is what it was building for me. So if you go through you have Edge 2 and you can see each one as it loads has a different preset that you can see and you can pick your favorite one. If you like any of them, you can click on the little star and it will add it to your favorites. So we go down to your favorites and you can see that I've already added one. There's bouquet and there's contrast edgy. So that's the that's the gist. Um, you do have a menu button down here that gives you um, things like uh, the product info, the user guide, you can enter your key if you bought the software check for updates, things like that. Um, you have a feature called Snapshot. So let's say I picked uh, Contrast Edgy. And I'll let that load. You can see the difference there. If I click on the image, it'll give me the original. And then there's what Contrast Edgy looks like. Uh, you can click on Clarity and the drop-down will give you what it did. So this is where it boosted to give me this look. And if I go and I say, well, I want the micro contrast to go back down, then the tool will update as you can see the bar moving down here. And it's done. And what I can do is save a snapshot. And now I have, um, so if I go back to a snapshot I took earlier, it'll load that one. And you can see I kind of made this fall looking picture, which I'll show you how to do. And then snapshot three has a preview and I could load that and there it is. So that's kind of cool. It's like a little history bar. It's kind of like Lightroom. If you go into the history tab, you can check that out. Um, this one requires you just to click a button and go to there. But from the snapshot, you can go through and you can pick your old snapshots if you want. And then go over here and say, well, maybe I want to do the nature one. And so you click on there and it builds your previews. And we'll wait for it to load for just a second here. And you'll see what I mean. So now we have all the previews. We have dramatic, these hummingbird wings, which they give you plenty of names. You would never know what it is um, unless you actually looked at the previews. So this one gives it a lot of softness. Um, so let's go ahead and click on that and watch it load. Okay, now we have this kind of soft image, which you see some people shooting into the sunsets and they have portraits and they you know add this kind of soft contrast light to the picture. So we have that. And if you want to go back to the snapshots, well, I don't really like that so much, but I want to go back to the snapshot that I created. It's going to load that for you. And we're back to where we were. So if you like it that much that you say, well, I might want to apply this to a bunch of different images, you can click the plus sign and go ahead and just uh, save it as a, you know, save a snapshot or you can put it in a different folder and say, oh, this is a nature one, and you give it a name and say, uh, swamp, and then you say, it's created by me, and you give it a little description, and you can also create a new collection, so 
If you don't like any of these collections, create a new one, it'll show up over here on your menu. I'm going to have it cancel because I'm not going to actually save that one. So, <clears throat> that is the general overview of what this program does. Now, what we have up here is we can do a side by side comparison. If, if the live preview thing is kind of like what you know, floats your boat, you go back to nature, you can click fur and feathers, and you can see it update at the same time. So it's, it's kind of helpful, um, but you do have the full screen option, which always gives you the full shot. And you can click here and see the process shot, or you can see the original shot just by you know, holding your hand on, on the picture itself. Um, so let's go ahead and go through the uh, different views we have up here. The navigator view is just the image itself. Uh, we have a loop view, and loop view just allows you to drag the square around and shows you 100% detail of what is going on. So you can check out minute details of your picture and see how these adjustments are being applied. Uh, the next one is a mask. Now mask is uh, very, very cool. And if you've never, uh, if you've never used a mask before, um, you are going to love this feature once you get done. Because what you can do is, let's say, okay, so I've got the mask inverted. So white means that whatever I clicked over here is going to be applied to the entire image. So let's go ahead and apply it. Okay. So now we have how many bird wings? One. Okay. So the default for the brush is to paint on something that you don't want. So if you didn't want this feature to be applied to this log here, so have the brush on hide, and what it's going to do is paint black on the mask, but it's going to hide those features onto my image. And if you look up in the top left, right, excuse me, you can see it painting black on the mask. Now, a mask in Photoshop basically says, um, take whatever you've done to this part of the image and either show it or don't show it. So what we've done here, any part that's white is going to show how many bird wings one. And any part that I've painted black is going to actually show uh, the original. So what we can do is go back to Navigator. You can click on there and it'll show you, okay, well, here's the before and there's the after. But notice the tree doesn't change before, after, before, after pretty cool. So if you don't like what you did, you can always go back and you can take reveal and say, well, I, I kind of wanted it here. So I pinned that. Now you see that it's not black anymore. It's white. Or I kind of wanted it in the middle of the log. Kind of give it that cool uh, hazed out feature right there. So we can do that. And you can also change your brushes. So we have a normal brush, edge aware, and color aware. Color aware kind of tries to pick a color and it tries to dodge it. So whenever you're doing your, your reveal or not, you can tell it, hey, don't don't touch this color. Um, I haven't found to work really well, but I haven't played with it that much. So the other thing you can do is invert your mask and say, well, I have, let's say I only want to reveal a tiny bit of the, of the picture and the rest of it, I don't want it to show that effect. So what you would do is generally just invert that mask and that way all of this would be black and the only parts you want the effect to apply to you would paint white. And so we have we have that, we change our brush back to normal so we can get our brush. Um, and we click on the brush so we get it back and then what you can do is say, well, I'm on the reveal portion. So I'm going to bring that log back and you can see it come back. Um, you can change the hardness of the brush. What that does is expands that middle right there all the way out to the edge. And so anything I click is going to be as uh, big as that circle right there. Um, and if you bring it back down, you can obviously see that it gets really small. It's like a, it's like a big feather. You can see how soft it gets on the outside. It's, it's actually feathering it for you. Um, you can't change with the bracket keys. There may be a preference that I haven't hit yet. So changing the brush size is only done over here if I hit bracket keys. Oh, and they're working now. So bracket keys do change it just like Photoshop. So you definitely want to use those as a shortcut. Um, next one I want to show you is you go through the hue and saturation. And this is how I created that kind of fall looking picture earlier. So I'm going to go to my mask and it's just a drop down right here. Um, and we've got 
everything is revealed, so we're good there. Um, we actually don't want a mask on this one, so we're good to go now. So what we're going to do is take the greens and we're going to pull them down. And I want saturation right now, so let me move back to hue. So what I'm going to do is change these greens to yellows and create this sort of fall looking picture. So you know, kind of, it's kind of neon green when I shot it, right? Um, right now it's it's getting towards summertime in Texas, so um, everything is green. Um, however, I kind of like this looking like a fall picture. So what you can do in Lightroom is do the same thing, but here you're doing it all in the same program, right? So apply a preset, go through. If you do apply a preset, it's going to erase whatever you did here. So that's why the snapshot feature is really cool. So you want to say, hey, I want to take this snapshot and go through. And I haven't seen where you can actually rename these. Um, that would be really nice, but you can favorite it. So I'll update this if I actually do get to name that. But what we've done now is we've kind of aged this pond a little bit, right? So we've taken it into a different season and we've only affected the greens. And you know, disregard this image right here. I'm using the Sigma 2470 lens, and it's horribly vignetted, so don't worry about that. Uh, all right, so generally we've gone through most of what we need to look at in the program today. Um, one thing I did want to show you was we do have uh, gradients. Uh, so instead of your brush, if you don't want to use that, um, let's get out of this 100% view and take you back to the normal and there we go so if you don't like the brush and you want to use gradients you can do that um, they have a radial and a linear and a reflective so try out each one you can add this and hide some of your you know, the mask you can hide you can see what it's doing right there it's hiding some of the features do a radial if you see a spot and you say well i don't want that to be showing up so we'll do that and uh, if you do a reflected one, you can see kind of what that does as well. So, um, pretty neat program overall. The masking feature kind of makes it because you don't want these to apply everywhere all the time. Uh, the one thing that I would like to see is uh, stacking of features. So, once you applied something, um, kind of like on one software, you can go and hit the plus sign and add another option. Uh, in here, I don't see the option to do that because if I click OK, it's going to actually take me back to Photoshop and save this as a layer. So we'll go ahead and let this run its course, and then I'll show you what you mean. I'll pull up Photoshop so you can actually see that. And you can see the saving of the layers. Uh, it's a little bit slow as well. Um, that's not a deal breaker by any means. Uh, you can multitask and do something else, but if you have a lot of these in a workflow, uh, look for some extensive load times. Um, so it looks like it's zipping through right now. I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like on its layer. And we're done there. So let's go ahead and go back. And now you can see it. Um, you can see the yellows that we applied. And then you can also see what we took out in the green. So, pretty sweet software. Enjoy checking it out. I might go ahead and give it a purchase after this. Thanks for watching.